Coming up in this episode of Islander Outdoors, I head out to sea in my tiny three meter inflatable boat before heading south to a seal colony for an explore. Then we head to Port Aaron Bay to free dive with the biggest jellyfish I've ever seen. Islanders, welcome back to another sea adventure. We're out here, it's quite early morning actually, I've just come out for a little bit of a play on the sib. If this is the first time you've seen this little boat fit in a car, you basically deflate it, pump it back up. I'm fairly new to sibs, I've only had them for just under a year and I absolutely love them. I've got a proper boat as well, but quite often I'm reaching for this because it's just so versatile, pull up to a beach, get myself a coffee or whatever and we might well do that today I don't really have a plan and sometimes I don't always make a video went out last night at sunset and it was beautiful see we've got the new wheels I'm really happy with those we're fully rigged up we've got all the safety gear personal locator beacon we've got VHF radio brought the fishing rod I might have a little bit of a cast the conditions are due to calm down a touch earlier on they were a bit lumpy when I first came out you never know what you're gonna see I've already seen a jellyfish Quite close to the boat if you missed that last video we were surrounded by jellyfish chatting to that guy whose uh, boat had been nudged stroke attacked by orcas good thing with the wheels is i'm not governed by any tides if i need to pull it back in i can uh, the fish finder's not showing anything at the moment i've got a new anchor actually i'll show you that on the screen now put the measurements up that's pretty cool uh, dedicated anchor i was just nicking the anchor off the warrior which is a bit too hardcore for this little boat beast always bring the aerial drone because you never know top uh, bay for dolphins few minkies there was a humpback the other week look at that big jellyfish down there i don't even see that So we've traveled a few miles up and down the coast, up the north, back down the south, had a few casts. Not much really occurring, to be honest, haven't seen any wildlife yet. So I've headed over to Garwick Bay, where you saw me in one of the previous videos jumping in the water. But if you recall, I've been to this stony beach before. We came here on my first sib for a coffee. It was snow covered, it was beautiful. So I didn't have wheels then though, and this is a totally different sib. This sib, the whole reason I've got it is to do wild camping adventures. Uh, sort of 24 hours at sea sort of thing different coves getting to places you can only get to from a little inflatable so i say we pull up to the beach now fire up the jet boil have a little recce around i've camped here before you've seen it in quite a few of my videos i do love it down here water temperatures 14.6 degrees celsius so we are heating up hence all the jellyfish really i've seen loads of asked about my drone all the time it's in a little pelly case it's all nicely cut out I've got the integrated controller with screen so I don't have to mess around with my phone and it is just a tiny little DJI Mini 3 Pro it weighs less than 249 grams or something so you don't really need any regulations or whatever certainly where I live you can just fly them pretty much anywhere other than near the airport two batteries down there spares 
and the AI on this, the auto tracking is unbelievable. Right, let's fire her up, shall we? See you later, mate. Controller in hand. You have to be careful because I've turned obstacle avoidance off it. Oh, okay. Well guys, that was a short-lived trip to the beach. Didn't get a chance to get the jet boil fired up. Unfortunately, there's some scientists down there doing some sampling of the water. So they had all sorts of probes in the water. So yeah, a respectful thing to do would be just to leave them to it. I could have pulled up further down the beach, but no, it's okay. It was a great test for the wheels actually, because it was a real shingly beach there. Uh, when the tide's out, you can get in on the sand, but it was really th thick shingle and the wheels perform really well. Obviously the boat is fully laden. I've got dive weights, fuel, everything you can imagine in here. So for one person getting that off the beach, it was all right, actually. It wasn't easy, but it was okay. Top speed with two people on this boat last night, 13 knots. So only a knot slower than with me on it. So I think it just planed better. There's on now with a spinner on the end. We're in about 30 foot of water down here. The past few times I've been out on Laxey Bay, all I'm seeing is jellyfish. I am not getting any hits on this fish finder. Right, let's uh Well, nothing out here, nothing on the fish finder. I'm gonna bring the boat back in and we're gonna head off to a free diving spot, hopefully somewhere half decent. A few cool little additions coming to this, uh, to the boat actually, because I want to do the 24 hour camp emissions. I want to put some 12 volt lights. You just drop down behind the boat and they illuminate the complete underneath of the boat. Good for attracting squid and all the marine life at nighttime by all accounts. First test of the GoPro wireless remote. So basically when I've got cameras dotted around the boat, I don't want to be leaning up, turning them on all the time, so I just turn them on with this. It's actually really quite handy. Right, let's bring the boat in and we'll carry on with the mission. So that, guys, that is not sewage. That is algae. And that is what the basking sharks come to feed on. No way the GoPro's picking it up. But my daughter's nursery and all that are on the beach and they're all waving. <laughs> you catch anything? You caught more fish than me. I've been all around here. No, I couldn't catch anything. Oh, nice. Are you on the feathers? Oh, well, all the best, mate. That bloke's catching fish from the pier and I can't get anything from the boat. Before I go free diving, I get asked multiple times a video about this A-frame. Basically, it's a, I think it's called Barica. Barica is the brand. Um, it's a bit like Railblazer, but it's fully, you take it off, fully adjust it. You saw me put it on the boat at the start. Uh, you can get them on the Boat World website. I'm not affiliated or linked to them. I don't receive any money or anything like that, but it's really quite useful. I have got a Railblazer anchor light to put on the top. I've just flushed the engine now. And another thing I want to show you guys, which are really amazing, is these little things, these bungees that I found really good. 
put this show, show you the box on the screen but all this stuff's linked below just little refinements really same with the seat sliders from the last video right i'm going to rinse her off and then we'll head into the water Welcome to the seal colony. I've just flown the drone around, just seeing if it was any good for the free dive down here. And uh, the seals are all having a great time, being fairly lazy, lying on the rocks. The odd one swimming, but they're not going to come out to play. I think they're uh, having a siesta. But it got me thinking actually, we're going to go free dive around the coast where there's loads more jellyfish and uh, lots more to see hopefully. Uh, but this place here, the calf, there was a disaster here. So the 28th of December, 1852, Brig Lily, which was a vessel known to be carrying gunpowder, I think ran, ran ashore, ran the rocks. And uh, 30 men from the parishes down here, different areas, all carpenters and, you know, locals, all came to the aid. And uh, basically there was a massive explosion. And I could be wrong here, but I think 28 of them died. And the shockwave was felt like an earthquake 18 miles away in Douglas. Can you imagine the sort of how that must have been back in the day? One guy survived who was actually at the explosion, a guy called James Kelly. His clothes were completely blown off him. He was definitely woke up on the rock and his descendants still live here today. So yeah, sad. And there is a part of the wreck over there, but out of respect, I've, I've never went over to explore it. I've kind of just left it alone, but yeah. Let's head to Port Erin, guys. Hope you like a bit of history. I do like to share the odd bit of history. Let's go. Guys, we're at Port Erin, ye old staple. Love free diving down here. There's always something to see. I've already just seen a massive jellyfish off the side. So yeah, can't pretty keen to get in. I just found out on the radio as well. This is the second hottest day on record ever here. So it's 28.6 degrees Celsius. Pretty hot in a wetsuit. Could do this without a wetsuit, but I don't want to get stung by any jellyfish. It's a bit breezy. But once we get in, we'll be right. So I'll see you in the water. Absolutely love that. Those jellyfish were the biggest that I've ever seen. They were like a metre wide. Incredible, majestic. There's something, I don't know, almost like extraterrestrial about them things. Oh. Said hello to the uh, government divers. He was down doing some work at the end of the pier here. The boys said they radioed down to him, say I was coming down. Small island. I knew one of the guys on the boat. 
plenty of fish as well on the hunt for dogfish, spur dogs, but I didn't see any. I can see those massive jellyfish still at the surface over there. Incredible. I absolutely love today's adventure. Hope you did. You know, we saw some seals, not much off Laxey really, other than the boat. And yeah, I have to go to work now. I've only taken a few hours off work, got up extra early to come out, and it's still only mid morning now. So fantastic. Love that. Probably see you guys on the next adventure.